Admiral Gregory Quinn is on Relva 7 and has requested to be beamed aboard the Enterprise immediately. Wesley Crusher has a friend named Jake. And Mordok constructed the, checks notes, Mordok strategy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton and Denise Crosby. Hello. My name is Ryan T. Hust. Today we're doing a review of Star Trek The Next Generation, Season 1, Episode 18, Coming of Age, written by Sandy Freeze, directed by Michael Vahar. This was March 12th, 1988. We've got a fantastic guest. We are absolutely thrilled to have John Putch joining us today. Hello, John. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to be here. We also have a very special thanks to give out to Grandpa One, a.k.a. Tim Baum, for sponsoring this entire season. Let's wow. just get right into it. John, you yes. played this guy. Yes, thank you Mordock. for having me. Yes. And uh, before we hit record, Denise asked you how long that makeup took, which is probably the question you'll get for the rest of your life. What's the answer to it? Well, it, was, it had to be at least thought four and a half to five hours because they called me at Figure if your call time's 3.30 and you get in the chair, then uh, my set call was 7 a.m. So what's that? Three and a half, almost four hours. So and sometimes it'd be later because, you know, they they delay or move something or something. And, and yeah, I was asleep in the chair. So it was a really long process. And but it was a very lucrative uh, guest spot because they'd have to uh, force you to come in inside of 12 hours pretty much every day that I worked. So. Um, mm -hmm it turned out to be a nice, you know, extra cheese uh, for, for coming in so early, thanks to Screen Actors Guild and their rules. So, mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah, How I fell asleep it, in the chair. Huh? How long did it take to take off? Oh, well, not as long, but I, it, you know, I had never done an appliance uh, a character before, so I didn't realize that they needed to take it off for yeah. you. And yeah. I, no one told me that until the, you know, the AD or the PA said, yep, you got to go back to makeup. I go, but I'm done. He goes, no, no, no. <laughs> they need the stuff. And I just assumed I was to, to rip it off and go home and clean up like you do in the theater. And uh, no, so I, I, it took, um, I don't know, half an hour to get it off. And it was rough. They'd be putting yeah. that, that stuff on your head, that acetone and stuff. And it was, uh, it was bad for the skin back then. Yeah. yeah. But, it, um, uh, People yeah. don't re realize that, you know, um, mm -hmm. that, you know, they, they, they're only focused on the, you know, application, but man, you gotta, you gotta painstakingly get that removed. And, and you're, and at the end of the day, all you do want to do is get home and, and just rip it off, you know, but yeah. you gotta sit there a whole second level process. Lunchtime was always unique for me because um, when when everyone would go to lunch, it's a walk away on the Paramount lot. So they give you an hour and, you know, you'd walk to the commissary and me being a Star Trek fan prior to the show, uh, you know, you you were in the commissary and you'd see Star Trek Starfleet characters walking <laughs> around with their trays you know, nice. and there, and it was like I, I took note of it and was just so amazed by it. And I would, of course, tell my wife everything when I got home. Guess who I saw in commissary today? I saw I saw a Vulcan, and I saw <laughs> I saw a three, I saw a transporter guy. I saw some gold. <laughs> I saw some red. You know, I had the whole thing. And then there I was in the blue thing, and I clearly was the anomaly because everyone was staring at me, uh, and I felt like a. Uh, I don't know. I felt like a, a monster and uh, and I couldn't eat when I got there. I, you know, I, I, everything would break off if I ate. So I had to do soups and I had to, you know, they brought me sippy things during the day. And it was hard. I was I was uh, tired and hungry at the end of every day. Yeah. But, uh, you know, fun. Nevertheless, I don't think I could uh, get through that today at this but it was oh, worth it, at least for those of us who watched it, maybe not for you. But mm -hmm. as Denise mentioned, she said before we recorded that this was the best makeup she's seen so mm -hmm. far. Uh, and uh, the Emmy Awards tend to agree because this episode was nominated for Outstanding mm -hmm. uh, Makeup in a Television Series. And this specific thing uh, nominated, uh, that was, uh, of course, Michael Westmore. Um, so... Great accolades there, and it was, you know, yeah. noticed, which is not something that happens well, very often why. with yeah. Star Trek. Well, it was nominated, but it didn't win. Correct? Yeah. I mean, what could it? What possibly beat out this? 
My uh, guess is uh, something non-sci-fi. They hate sci-fi. They're so well, I, and also remember, <laughs> you're season one, and you're just becoming a super hit, and you know how they are. And then, but he got his Emmys later. I mean, there were Emmys yeah. delivered later in year. Were there not? I'm pretty sure there were. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know actually. Yeah, I no, mean, there were. Yeah, there were. Yeah, he's got plenty of Emmys. <laughs> yeah, he's, okay. got more. he's got a, a ton. He's of all right. Are, yeah. Are we allowed to swear on this show or not? I mean, I'll keep it. <laughs> we can use the word 57, as in 57 Emmys uh, uh, that Next Generation was nominated for. We'll check on how many they actually won. 50, but that's wow. Gigantic. Oh, it won 19. There you go. So that's exactly one third, if my math is correct. Yeah. 119 Emmys. Yeah, I mean, they're all, the they were all. Gen? All in makeup and, and all in makeup? No, different. That's no everything. Acting. Different categories, yeah. Any acting Emmys? Well, they don't. I'll tell you, she didn't win an Emmy. They don't give acting Emmys to sci-fi. No, 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 no. They don't. Which is terrible because you know it is acting. I don't know why they don't qualify it. Um, it, It just. If there's a good story, it should just get nominated. Yeah, to to this day, it's that that's the case, isn't it? It's, it's kind of say, a discriminatory thing. It's it's a yeah. discrimination against science fiction. <laughs> yeah. And actually, yeah. You, you joke, but it, it, we've always felt that way, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, John, you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. You mentioned you are a Star Trek fan. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when you first laid eyes upon Star Trek and dreamt that someday you'll be a monster at the commissary <laughs> in the name of Star Trek? <laughs> no, never. And, uh, you know, I loved the original show and uh, as a as a young youngster. And, uh, you know, it was when this thing came about, when they announced they were doing this. I mean, the, just this town. Well, the, the Star Trek fans were we were all a flutter because we had the movie at that point. We, I think we had a couple of the movies uh, at that point. And now there was gonna, this, the new show. We were just dying. And uh, luckily. I knew Junie Lowry Johnson from years ago, who is a very loyal casting director and brings in all of us on most of this, you know, whenever she can. And I read for the pilot for the, the I read for one of the characters on the first show. I don't even remember, but she brought me in on everything. And uh, I came in uh, over the years on the uh, first season on uh, on this show. And, and, you know, this one hit. So uh, I got in that way. But um I never dreamt I'd be on the show, but when it, when we all heard it was coming, you know, every as we all do, our, our little actors in the town, we're all we're all excited about it and trying to get in on it and hoping it goes. And uh, but yeah, no, I, I I did pretty good in the '80s when I was an actor. Of course, I don't. I'm a director now, but I don't. I did the '80s were kind of good. I was the right age. I had a. Uh, I was slim. I had hair. You know, I had all that. I didn't. You know, I was I was charactery, but not uh, you know. Uh, so I I I remember uh, doing well in the eighties, and then it all just fell apart in the mid nineties, and that's when I started veering off to do other things. <laughs> Smart. Uh, when you first come on the screen, you have this kind of harmonica looking contraption. What what what? Right. Do you remember how? Yeah. Well, it looked so we like must, we, we we must discuss yeah. this item. Uh, I've discussed it before, <laughs> and it it is it was a a, a marvelous little gadget that they uh, created for this character who was from a water planet. Meaning, mm, okay, that's why I have gills. If you look behind Ryan, they've they put gills oh, yeah. back where my ears are, and they're and these tendrils. It was a very you know fish like character. That's what they told me. And uh, so they want they needed something here, which would lead the viewer to believe that this is what I used to breathe oxygen when I really, need uh, to be, you know, gilling or something. So they had this little license to gill. Yeah, this <laughs> thing that clipped on to my uh, I had a you know, I had the the uh, the girdle on under the tunic and they clipped this thing in and it held there. It had a battery in it. And uh, they had little LEDs, which was amazing back then, because I, how do you get those, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and it, uh, and they dropped little ice crystals. Uh, Alan, um, what was the prop man's name? Alan. Oh. oh, he was so nice. Sweet Alan. Anyway, yeah. he, 
he'd, he'd come over and drop little ice crystals in uh, that were uh, dry ice every, mm -hmm. like literally every shot. And I would have to hold my head a certain way so you couldn't see over the edge. So the camera couldn't see over the edge to see the little ice crystals. So, and then they to, to add even more uh, difficulty to doing everything, uh, I had to like try to puff into it to disperse, you know, clouds. <laughs> Because they didn't have, you know, smoke VFX or they couldn't track it at the time. You know, all this stuff that you can do now. So uh, I had to like stand there at a certain level like this most of the time. And then I, I could only cock my head this way and that because if I ever did this, they go, oh, no, 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 no. Camera operator would say, no, 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 can't, can't do that. I can see the ice. And I go, okay. And can you try to puff into that as you're saying this line? <laughs> oh, I go, no. I said, I'm talking. So if I talk and try to puff, I'd have to puff in my nose. I said, I can yeah. do it in between. I can do it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, right before I talk, right after I talk. And that's what I tried to do. Plus, it changes oh. your performance. But uh, <laughs> that's right. The, the property master, the prop master was Alan Sims. Just looked yes, up. Yes, Alan Sims. like a nice guy, then, guy. Sweet guy. Sweet guy. Thank yeah. you for looking that up. Wow. Well, you you made it work. I mean, you you totally you know, right. sold it. You sold it. <laughs> I'm good with the props. I mean, that was one thing I could, I was hiding behind the mask, but I could uh, you know, as an actor, I knew how to hit the tape mark and I knew how to cock my head and I knew how to play with the props. <laughs> I was good at that, you know. It all worked. It all worked. <laughs> God. Yeah, it was pretty it was fun. Fantastic. And, you know, everybody was nice on that show. I mean, I knew you, you probably talked about this ad nauseum, but like everybody in that cast, like I didn't get the sense that even though Rick Berman, who, you know, we all know was the biggest ego in the in the in the on the lot, we we I didn't sense that uh, people were being uh, I didn't maybe I didn't know weren't being mistreated. Everyone felt uh, like a group, an ensemble. I, I saw you guys. Uh, backing each other up, you know, in scenes. And I saw everybody participating because you all felt like, you know, you were all the crew of the, of the, enter uh, the enterprise. So, you know, yeah. I, 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 I appreciated that and saw it. I don't know if that was the case, Denise, but that's yeah, how it Yeah, absolutely. Looked, I mean, everybody, you know? you know, we were, we were in the trenches, you know, that first season, we, we, um, you know, we had to uh, really like get, watch each other's backs you know yeah. it was it was a it was wild um we weren't sure what was going on behind the scenes we weren't always privy to things we felt there was some tension uh with the, in the writer's room and and mm -hmm. um you know they kind of power powers that be i mean suits were coming down from paramount to you know keep an eye on us and and so we were they 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 tried to keep us in the dark a lot about stuff. Um, I'm sure. And yeah. you know we and and that was fine. We just we just we just kept each other going. And you know the hours were brutal. I mean, those those days were really long. And um, you know yeah. we had it was it was tough shooting that show. It was not easy. You but know? but John, before we were uh, we we began recording, you said something that I want to double back on. And it was a really great compliment, but I, I just wanted it for clarification because something I hadn't heard before. And you said outside of uh, Patrick Stewart, the biggest, you know, star on the show was who? Denise. It was true. She's the one when the cast came out and you saw who was in it. Denise yeah. is who everyone know who, who it was. I mean, oh, we all kind of knew Patrick because, you know, everyone knows the Brits. We love the Brits. but. He, you know, yeah. she was our she was our name, really, to, yeah. to us actors. So, uh, yeah. So um, uh, that's I'm not kidding. That's the way it was. And at, at where I was and I'm you know, I was in there. I was in that game back then. I was yeah. John, I, I made a good living in the 80s going from show to show. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it was a time when you could do that. Uh, and yeah. Of course, yeah. Uh, not even close to being able to be the case these days. Maybe in the last 20 years, you can't even do it. So. Well, you certainly made a pretty big name for yourself. I mean, looking up all your credentials in the past, you've done quite a bit. Uh, you've done quite a bit in directing uh, currently as well. 
Before we get into directing, though, I just appeared for a quick second because I just remembered something from my childhood. And that thing I remembered was this. You yeah, are I was going to say, sir, you are an action bring that figure. Out? <laughs> oh, wow. How, wow. So, I mean, that's got to be so cool to have your very own action figure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Denise does as well. So does Ciroc. But that is oh. an iconic character. Oh, cool. If you've got your own, ca- yeah. your own action figure. And that, and that is indeed the Mordok guy, because yes. that's the outfit. That's the tunic. Exactly. They didn't. Yeah. I guess they didn't put the Mendon out. But look how giant that thing is. The 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 breathing device. Look yeah. how giant it is. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't make yeah, it small enough. Shooting. They couldn't get a mold small enough. But yeah, you know, I have one of those signed by Michael Westmore. I have it in, oh, cool. the, in a box. And oh, wow. uh, you know, as Denise will attest, uh, we got we got nothing from that <laughs> uh, action figure. <laughs> right. Let me ask you about that action figure uh, specifically. How long after your appearance did it uh, did the action figure materialize? I think it, it pretty soon because they were mm-hmm. they were full into merchandising. I, I believe it must have been the following year, if not that you know soon after. It was definitely after it aired, and uh, you know everyone. Oh, I know, I know what because when I went back season two to do that mm-hmm. other one, Michael Westmore pulled it off the shelf and said, "You see this." You're an action figure. And then we, t- you know, <laughs> and there, that's how I, I knew about it. So it must have happened between the between the two. And, uh, you know, I used yeah. to see them on eBay. And, um, you know, cause I'm stealth. No one knows it's me because look at the makeup. You can't <laughs> yeah. tell. Oh, I can, yeah. I can oh, gaslight people. Oh, we can tell it was you in a second. <laughs> <laughs> so those lips. Uh, I gaslight people online all the time with uh, on eBay, especially that are selling those. And, uh, you know, I, I usually uh, can say, hey, how come you don't have the one that's signed by Michael Westmore? You know, and they go, what? There's one that's signed? But you go, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Wow. Well, let's be talk. careful. People, people will be getting those signed at the convention. They'll be sending them like, yeah. Mr. Westmore, that's right. can you sign my Mordock, please? <laughs> oh, that's true. I sure thought so I'm that. pretty sure that I'm pretty sure there will be one. Listen, you the, tell them, the, the tell number, them, no, the, I won't sign Mordoc. I'll only sign Mendon. Mendon, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, you know, as an actor, when you've worked as many years as we have, you, you, you can track what are the most uh, aired shows you've ever done. I don't know if you ever do that, huh. you guys. Uh, but no. like uh, this show, uh, I get more fan mail from these two appearances on this show than a- anything I've ever done. The other one, second, is Jaws 3D, because I was in that. And then g- a distant third is uh, Seinfeld. I did one episode of Seinfeld. Oh, oh which And I one? had like three lines with Jerry. And I'm, oh, I'm wow. it's on all the time. There's always $2 coming uh, residual okay. or something. But <laughs> this show, the power of this franchise, forget about it. I mean, people send me full-on glossies to sign and cards and you know the little trading cards and the you know those action figures it's wild and i'm happy to sign them and send them off you know mm-hmm. but it's it's crazy how amazing it just huge it is it's yeah. it's it's um, and i'm so lucky to be a part of it because i got to do two of yours and then i got to be in the generations movie i have stories about shatner on that one and then right. i got and then years later i'm where i get to work with bob picardo he's he's been in several of my movies as a director and uh and i, oh. I directed him in a play and then i got to i just finally got to work with john johnny uh, frakes this year in this the hallmark thing i did i have picardo and frakes in the same oh, wow. movie. In the same thing yeah and we had oh. a, we had a we had What's a it called? love fest it's called uh, a built more christmas and it'll be out oh. in out in you know Walmart. next well yeah. excuse cool. me hello i know you've <laughs> yeah. done them. you've done yeah. like a million of them right not no no i've never done thought, the Walmart thing oh well we need to we need to we need, we need to, to i need to suggest you you know and, we need, <laughs> and it's got to be christmas because it's, it's always know, christmas it's, it's got to be a christmas movie oh because, yeah you know, i can i can so i got some, love i got some street I can see you cred <laughs> yeah, I can see in a nice love story, a nice homework Actually, love story. Yeah, there was one I almost did once where it was kind of cool because it was pretty progressive. It was, um, you know, I was the mother of of a, a guy who's gay, and and it was the first time Hallmark was doing like a Christmas gay story. 
but yeah. I don't know what happened. It sort yeah, of that was a big deal. That was that was in the yeah. last couple of years, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So you have you've I, been down there. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'd like I'd love to work with you. That would be so you, much. Fun. Yeah, it would be that fun. Would, the the trekking. That, so nice. yeah. I know. It's like it's I'm connected <laughs> in ways of six degree. You know. Yeah. So I, I'm very glad about that. I'm very happy about to be included and, and be part of the history books. It's fun because, you know. John, just, you mentioned your, your transition from being an actor to a director, which you are currently. And my question is, and this is this may be a question you haven't gotten before. But would you hire yourself, <laughs> the actor version of yourself, for a project uh. that you've directed? And if so, which project would that have been? Well, yes, I would, because <laughs> I appreciate the kind of actor I was. Okay. Show up on time, know my lines, don't yeah. piss anybody off, work as yeah. an ensemble, not a star, and, mm, yep. and you know, hit, hit my mark. I mean, that's a director's dream. And when I get actors like that on, a, on my set as a director, I'm literally, a, I'm like, Oh my God! Thank you, Lord. Some somebody has sent a, a a good human being actor to me that's not in this for some other reason. But anyway, yes, mm -hmm. I would I would uh, put uh, hire myself. What project? No idea because uh, I don't I don't <laughs> I don't, I don't I, I'm not particularly uh, fond of looking at myself on camera. So. <laughs> that's why because i deleted my uh my uh picture here i'm only seeing you three so just I'll give you an idea. <laughs> really yeah. well here you are yeah. too yeah. Uh, well, that i can take because i you know <laughs> <laughs> now well, john we only have you for another minute or so but you did i know but you did s sneak quickly by saying that you have many stories about william shatner oh it's um, a whole episode well, you were it's on the movie <laughs> Generations, right? You were one of the reporters yeah. on yeah. the bridge, which is yeah. such a fun scene. Everybody remembers that scene as the Tuesday <laughs> scene. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, I'll give you the cliff note. Uh, it was uh, me and Tommy Hinckley, another actor, oh, uh, who who we were pals and we got cast. Junie, Larry Johnson, sorry, it's... It, it, Judy Lowry Johnson said to the producers of the movie, hey, let's get everybody we loved from Next Generation's guest stars and see if they'll, you know, we can put them, populate these little, you know, parts. And that was the pitch when they called to ask, would you ever do two days, uh, you know, as a reporter or would you ever, you know, they were very nice uh, about, you know, giving us the, making us feel good about ourselves. But and and because of that, I I made a I got in there uh, and Tommy got in there and I knew uh, Gwen Van Dam got in there and there are other people who had been in the show that apparently they liked over the years. Anyway, so that that's how I that's got so in there. Fun. So the best part is though, it's I'm I'm the guy with the camera on my head, and uh, Tommy is the audio guy. He's got the microphone, so I have the stupid appliance again <laughs> on my head. <laughs> and, and the pictures, the pictures are hysterical, and and so and I'm on the bridge when they parade Kirk and and uh, uh, Scotty and check Walter Kane and check off around, and uh, I got a couple of days with those guys. It might have been a whole week, and um, I loved those two guys. And uh, Shatner, you know, was Shatner, and uh, <laughs> but those two guys were great. I talked about, you know, I, I sat around. They sat with in the chairs with us. They were really cool, and uh, they they were not happy with Shatner because his book had just come out. You know, his tool book, basically, where he his his ego and his, he himself uh, just alienated even more people. So, everybody, uh, please were, welcome William Shatner. Is here. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But anyway, he was he was pretty funny and pompous, and I got to interact with him, and he he thought I was an extra. And he never looked me in the eye. And he literally, I was, I had dialogue with him and he didn't, he, 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 he kept looking at David Carson, the director and saying, is there any way we could possibly, you know, and I'm going, Bill, <laughs> I'm here. I'm right, I'm right here. here. Tell, tell me what you want wow. me to do. Wow. And, and uh, so there was a bit of that. And Can you ask him to move a little bit to the left? Please? <laughs> yeah, I should have. 
I should have, but he threw me into a light. Uh, you know, he pushes me away. Get out of my face with that thing. You know, he pushes me into a light and I literally, I knocked over a light because he pushed me off this thing. You know, he didn't <laughs> make me work. And so I like, literally I walked up to him and I said, look, we've done stage combat. Don't push me. I, I just knocked the light over. I literally say to him, I go, just, you know, give me the shot. I'll do the work. This is how we do it. And he literally looked at David Carson and said, I think we should do it again. And I will, I'll, you know, I won't <laughs> push so hard this time. <laughs> so it, it was hilarious. It, it was a hilarious four days. And there's wow. more. There's more. Wow. There's so much more, but I can't, you know, yeah, I know you don't want to talk about it. But because you know, this is the not that show. But uh fun. <laughs> and I every day I'd go home and I'd go, honey, guess what happened today? And I'd tell her the whole because it's it's Captain Kirk, you know? Yeah. Watch yeah. him yeah. since childhood. And there he was. He was a really it was a really fun yeah. experience. So anyway, I got to do that, and and that, and that, I think that was the end of it. Really. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't work on your show, Ciroc, and I didn't, uh, I didn't work on oh. Voyager. I knew people. I knew, mm-hmm. you know, we all knew each other then. You know, yeah. You go to well, you mentioned Junie, and I, I mean that yeah. Junie hired me for my role, and I love her dearly for that. Yeah. I'll never be able to thank her for that. Uh, repay her. Yeah, but no, uh, she was she was yeah. great to us. And David yeah. Carson directed our pilot episode, if I'm not mistaken. So I, uh, he definitely yeah. did. Yeah, that mm-hmm. sweet guy. Yeah, sweet guy. Really. And, I liked uh, him a lot. I thought a terrific director too. Yeah, yeah. and and I had that movie was John Alonzo was the DP, the mm, John wow. Alonzo, wow. and he had wow. you know. And what's weird is is there was one camera even on this feature. Nowadays, we're used to two or three cameras. Yeah, one camera. I can't imagine shooting one camera as a director. But uh, but he had his credits on a plaque on the Panavision, on the big camera. So, like, <laughs> there would be literally one, you know, those uh, plastic plates with the white uh, perfect lettering engraving on it. And it would have mm-hmm. all of his movies. You know, oh, and, oh, and, really? and, and, you know, and he, he had his little hat on and everything. And, and I loved him because... He would be standing around in the middle of a set like this, and people are setting up, and time would go by, time would go by, and we're sitting there waiting to start. And he literally would shout at the top of his lungs, Are we gonna shoot this or admire it? And I never <laughs> forgot that. <laughs> and I say it, I say it to this day when what I'm waiting, I'm when great. I'm waiting on something on set, and because I want to go fast as a director. And uh, and uh, I'm standing around. I'll say that once in a while. That no one knows what they think of. Who's the asshole? No, no. You know, right. Do you do, right. you do you use that voice though when you do it though? Guys? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes because no one knows what I'm doing, or they may yeah. think he's. They may think I'm kidding. I I really because uh, uh, I thought it was Sean Connery. That sounded a lot like Sean to me. No, this was John Alonzo. Whoa, oh, oh, did, okay. did I put the accent in? There? Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Sorry. It was a Sean Connery. In there. Well, you know what Sean Connery said when the book fall, fell on his head, right? I blame no. myself. So, uh, <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway, the point is, oh, Sean. This, sorry, Denise. This has <laughs> oh, been so much fun. My heart, be still, my heart. We uh, really appreciate yeah. you joining us. You absolutely are the guest by far that looks the most like a football coach that we've ever had, and I love every <laughs> minute of it. And we, I am really an NFL fan. You. And I am an NFL fan. Thank you. Now, I know you don't have repeats, but if you need me for a matter of honor, just let me know. I can continue the story. We would love that. Oh, we'd love to hear the Mendon. Because there's a lot of Do there are it. a lot of questions uh that we're gonna have about Mendon. Yeah. Um, but we you know I, shouldn't ask yeah. him now. So we'd love to have you. Thank you so much. I got much. more I got more trivia. Uh we didn't touch on any of that. You're very good with your timing. Thank you. Uh, I would stay longer, for but the I, I understand. Yeah, no, I like the jokes. <laughs> uh, all right, well, look, you know, it's great it was a to pleasure, know you. Pleasure to meet you, John. So you good off, to Rock. see you again. Been way, Bye, Denise. way too yeah. long. I know. Well, long. thanks and, again. John, before you go, movie. before you go, everybody at home, check out the Hallmark movie. What was it called again? It's called A Built More Christmas. And, and uh, uh, the one with Denise in... Crosby will be the following year, everybody. <laughs> <Let's>, let us <laughs> hope. <laughs> Uh, so everybody stick around we will be right back uh thank you so much to john this has been amazing really appreciate you and your time be right back everybody on the seventh rule